the new Pokemon game, Scarlet and Violet, there are brand new forms of Pokemon, past and future. However, not every Pokemon got these new forms. In fact, a lot of them didn't. So I took it upon myself to create my own future and past forms of the starter Pokemon. Starting off, we have Charizard. So today, we're gonna set out to try to find these brand new Charizard forms. And not only are they brand new forms, but they even have their own movesets, their own abilities, their own stats, and they get their own signature moves at level 100. So today, we're gonna find them, catch them, train them, and battle them together to see which form of Charizard is the strongest. So here is the regular Charizard that we have, but you're old moves, bucko. You're no longer cool. Today, we're looking for your ancestors and your future form. But to actually find them is a little bit more challenging than it may seem. The way that we have all of our Paradox Pokemon spawn is in the Ultra Space Dimension. And to get there, I have to find a wormhole, which is a lot easier said than done. Now, wormholes do spawn naturally, just randomly in the world. Or if you have a Lunala, a Solgaleo, an Arceus, and maybe one other Pokemon, you can get them to spawn yourselves. But I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna have to find one of these things naturally. Oh my god, wait! <laughs> I just found a shiny Zubat! Wait, what? No way! Yo! I mean, it's a Zubat, so I don't think, you know, it's that valuable or anything, but what are the- Dude, I've been getting so lucky finding shinies recently. That is actually absurd. I found a shiny Volibee recently, a shiny Trapinch, and now maybe a shiny Zubat if I can stink and catch it. Come on, Zubat! You are not supposed to be the star of the show today. I got bigger and better fish to fry. But there we go. We caught the shiny Zubat. That was not supposed to be part of this video, but I'll take it. Let's go. Luckily, we are on the server right now, and I asked in chat if anyone can make a wormhole, and somebody said that they can. So, I'm gonna TP to Fantaseal, who has an Arceus, and there we go. He made a wormhole. Perfect. Thank you, bro. So, all we have to do now is fly up into the wormhole. Down. Down, Charizard. Down. That way. Please. Okay, here we go. Wormhole. And we're in. Okay. And now we are in the Ultra Space Dimension. Okay, so both forms actually seem to spawn in the desert. What's going on? Am I dying? What is this? Oh my gosh, dude. The Ultra Space Dimension is so creepy. I hate it here. Oh, is this a desert? I think it is. I think it is a desert. And this is where both of the Charizards should spawn. Let's see. What biome are we in? Ultra Desert. Yep. Okay. So theoretically, eventually, this is the area I should be in to get one of these bad boys to spawn. This is so cool. It reminds me of the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games when you eventually get to Area Zero. I know that there is like normal gravity and stuff there, but oh my god, why am I dying? But it's just like such a cool, unique place in the world that is not really explored too often. Oh, here's a Trap Inch and a Scylla Cobra. If you guys think any of these Pokemon deserve some Paradox forms, definitely let me know. I know Golem got an Alolan form. Oh, there's a Larvesta, which evolves into Volcarona, and that got a Paradox form. I think it's called Iron Moth. I did play the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games, guys, but I didn't really catch too many of the Paradoxes, I'm not gonna lie. I gotta study up on that. But anyway, the rates of the custom Paradox Pokemon in the game are the same spawn rates as their regular forms. So for the Charizards, the Paradox form of its spawning is the exact same rarity as finding a regular Charizard, which is pretty rare. Finding a Charmander and a Charmeleon is rare enough, but finding the final evolution out in the wild is pretty dang challenging. I feel like I need to ride on my Charizard to summon in its ancient form. Come on, Charizard, do something cool. Summon him in. There's oh, yeah. Maybe that'll work. Hello? Any ancient Charizards? Charizard, you got a big honker on you. Surely you can sniff out one of your ancestors here. And as I'm sure you guys know, this is where all of the Ultra Beast Pokemon spawn as well. I would love to see some paradox forms of those. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there are any in the game as of now. Ooh, Gibble. Hello, Gibble. But I think a future form of Boswell? Dude, that would be so cool. Or like a past form of Guzzlord? Oh, man. Oh, is this the Dunsparce? No, it's just regular Dunsparce. I don't think the Dunsparce is... <gasps> ah! oh -ho -ho -ho! Let's go! There he is, baby! This is the ancient 
Merchant Charizard. He is called the Burning Coat. Yo! This is his past form, bro. Oh my god, he looks so sick. He's like dying to this cactus thing, though. Could you please not do that? This is my friend. Hello, buddy. Oh my gosh, look at him. All right, here we are. We are in battle with this thing now. It's only level like 40 something. So I'm using a fur fro right now to damage it a little bit. And look at its sprite, dude. Its sprite looks so sick. One thing that's also really cool about these Pokemon is they do have shiny forms. I'm pretty sure that Burning Coat's shiny form is blue. I think that the flames are blue, and then I think he gets a little bit darker as well. Anyway, let's throw an Ultra Ball at it and see if we can catch it. First try, no good. I'm pretty sure that Burning Coat's typing is just fire type because he doesn't have any wings right now. He kind of just looks like a dinosaur with a giant fire skeleton on its back. Now I'm even more excited to see what the future form looks like when we eventually find that thing. Oh, and check this out. Regular Charizard against Ancient Paradox Charizard. Hopefully, I can catch this thing and train it up and then have the Charizards 1v1 to see which one is stronger. And there we go. We finally caught it. Let's go. Yo, he looks so cool. Let's check him out in the overworld. Bro, look at him. Oh my goodness. I need a nickname for this guy. If you guys can leave some nickname suggestions down below. That would be awesome. Yo, that is so sick. All right, I'm gonna go train him to level 100 and make sure that he's the strongest Pokemon he can possibly be just so that we can see what his full potential really is. And there we go. He's learning his signature move, Ancient Flame. It does 105 damage with 90 accuracy. The user summons forth the flames of a fire which destroyed a city in times past and launches it at its enemy. That thing sounds amazing. Now that he's level 100, let's go ahead and check his stats. A whopping 449 special attack and a very solid 329 speed. This thing is most certainly going to be a menace. I'm pretty sure that's like a lot stronger than regular Charizard is. But for the sake of the video, I did just change his palette to his shiny form and check this out. Oh my gosh. Yo, this might be the coolest Pokemon I've ever seen. Holy guacamole. I told people to come to spawn so that they could check out the shiny burning coat. And, well, someone has already found one of the Paradox Venusaurs. I'm not gonna show you guys any more, though, because I plan on doing a video on that in the future. But if you guys wanna play with these Pokemon yourselves, be sure to go ahead and join the Minecraft IP play.smashmc.co. And also, to make things a lot easier, just use the Technic Launcher, because that comes with all the textures already installed for you. Anyway, now that we have ourselves a burning coat, I think it's now time for us to find the future version of Charizard. So let's head back to the Ultra Space Dimension to hunt for Charizard's other paradox form. Oh my goodness, there he is! Oh no, he's flying away! Oh no, come back! I gotta get him in battle with him. Come here, yo! Yo! Oh my god, he looks so cool! Why does he have like a ginormous like battery on the end of his tail? I guess that makes sense, though, for him to be a little bit battery -y. Yo, Oh! Whoa, that's mine. I was like, where did that come from? Come here, attack! Get him! Oh, no. Dude, this is so epic. Are you serious? We have a past Charizard that is about to battle a future Charizard. Yo! Yo! Oh, my gosh. Look how sick that is. He doesn't have any arms. He only has wings. And he's called Iron Wing. Okay, I guess, okay, yeah, that makes sense. He's not called Iron Arms. I did manage to get myself a Master Ball for this one. Catching the Burning Coat was such a pain. It took me forever, so I made sure to have a Master Ball for this one. Let's freaking go, dude. I honestly don't know which one I like more. They are both so sick. Yo, oh my gosh, dude. Look at him. Oh. That is like the coolest. Oh, I think I like this one more. I have to admit. Let's look at them side by side, though. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I don't know. It's so cool, too. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Comment down below which one you guys like more. They're both so sweet. Let's see what typing he is as well. He is fire and steel type. I feel 
feel like for some reason he could have been electric too. Maybe fire electric, but fire steel most certainly also works. And right now his stats are kind of trash because he's level 47 and he's not like trained really well yet. So that's exactly what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go train this bad boy up to his full potential and then we can compare the two together. All right, and there we go. The boy is now level 100 and learning his signature move, Plasma Blaze. This does 100 damage with 90 accuracy. The user builds up plasma within its body, fuses it with its own electric aura, and launches it at its opponent. That is so cool that they each have their own signature moves as well. All right, so here are Iron Wing's stats after fully training him. His special attack is at 405 with his speed at 279, which compared to Burning Coat is actually pretty poor. He is slower and doesn't hit as hard, but Iron Wing's defense is much better. His HP is higher, his defense is higher, and his special defense is higher. So overall, as like a well-rounded Pokemon, Iron Wing is definitely better in that regard. But if you're going for a Pokemon that you want to hit really hard and be relatively fast, Burning Coat is definitely that one for you. It's really cool to see both of them have their strengths and weaknesses. Iron Wing's ability is Volt Absorb, which allows him to absorb any Electric-type move that comes his way, which is also kind of why I thought that he was going to be Fire and Electric, but it is open to change though, so if you guys think he should be electric type, it is no problem. We can easily change him to an electric type. There is one last thing that I want to do before we do battle the two together to see which one would win in a one-to-one -one battle, and I think you might know what that is. Let's go ahead and change Iron Wing to his shiny form. Alright, let's check him out in 3, 2, 1. Yo! Whoa! He's like all grayed out now. Dude! That is so clean! Oh my goodness, bro. That is so sick, and it seems like everyone loves them. Blastoise is one of the most iconic Pokemon in all of the game. With the new Pokemon games that just came out, it was a perfect opportunity for Game Freak to give them a brand new Paradox form. But they didn't. So once again, I decided to put the entire Pokemon community on my back. So I created a past and a future form of Blastoise. If you guys didn't watch my last video, I also created Paradox forms of Charizard. This is his prehistoric form called called Burning Coat. And this is his future form called Iron Wing. Now, if you guys thought that these were cool, just wait until you see the Blastoises because they might be my favorites so far. Not only do we have these forms, but they have their custom stats, custom abilities, and even their own signature moves. Like for example, Iron Wing has Plasma Blaze. So in today's video, we're gonna go out and search for the Paradox Blastoise forms. The past one is called Slashing Shell, and the future one is called Iron Blaze. Blaster. Iron Blast these no- This needs to stop now. The problem with going and finding these is that, well, they're not too easy to find. You see, the first thing I have to do is get to the Ultra Space Dimension, which is not super easy. I have to find a wormhole, and to do that is pretty rare. Unless you have a Lunala or a Solgaleo or an Arceus, because they can spawn them in themselves. But I don't have one of those. I really need to get one for making these videos much easier. What I do have, though, is a regular Blastoise. But you're just a little chump now. We don't want you. We want your ancestors. And your your future sister. No, not your future sister. No, I meant your future sister. The, your, the future version of you. Oh, that sounded so wrong. I'm sorry, Blastoise. I love you, buddy. One thing I do love about regular Blastoise is riding on him looks pretty hilarious. <laughs> Look at him. His legs are barely moving, but we are chugging right now. Holy guacamole. You'd think he'd be a lot slower because he is a giant tortoise. But no, those legs are moving. Also, if you guys want to play with all of these custom Pokemon that I have added into Minecraft, be sure to go ahead and join the Minecraft IP, play.smashmc.co. I highly recommend using the Technic Launcher to join because you'll already have all of the texture packs and everything needed to see these Pokemon. But make sure that you're using the Smash MC mod pack. Oh, another starter. There's a score bunny over there. Hello, score bunny. Oh, yeah, baby. There we go. Blastoise cannot jump high enough to get in now. Come on, jump. Uh, uh. Come on, Blastoise. Uh. Okay, bro. You really got to hit leg day. I want to say Iron Wing can fly, though. Yes, it can. It can fly way too high, even. Come on, buddy. Go down. Don't do this to me. I will say this animation looks freaking sick, though. Anyway, here we go. We are now in the Ultra Speed. Space dimension. Ooh, spooky. Oh boy, this is scary. It's so dark. And the thing is, this biome 
specifically is where both Blastoises will spawn. So I'm gonna have to hang out here for a little while. I see a Tynamo, a Wingle, not too much else though, to be honest. This biome right here is the desert in the Ultra Space, and that is where you find the Charizard. I really wish I could stay in that biome because it's a lot brighter. And this is gloomy and dark. Ooh, a Sableye. Oh, imagine a Paradox Sableye. He does already have a Mega Form. That's one thing that's really cool about the Paradox Forms is there's two different forms. There's past and future. And every Pokemon that I want to do a Paradox for, I can never decide if we should make it the past form or the future form. So that's why we did both for all three of the original starters. What if we did Pikachu? Is that weird? What if we did a Paradox Pikachu and made it like actually really strong so that you can use it in competitive play? Ooh, Grimer. Oh, I guys, I don't know why, but I feel like every single Pokemon that I see, I'm like, oh, that would be so cool if it had a Paradox form. Even though like who uses Muck? Muck's not even a good Pokemon. But for some reason, I don't know, dude. I could just feel like I could picture a future form Muck that is actually super cool. Ow! I always feel like I'm dying when I'm in this biome. And I don't know why. I just start dying. As far as the rarity goes for these things spawning, by the way, they're currently as rare as finding their actual form in the overworld. So the, the rarity is like finding a real Blastoise in the overworld, which I'm gonna be honest, is really rare. And I've kind of been pleading to make them a lot more common because in the actual Scarlet and Violet games, finding Paradox Pokemon is not very difficult. Ooh, and this Pokemon is on fire. So land it. That means it is part of the Poke Hunt. If you do slash hunt on the server, uh, you'll see that if you catch a Salandit, you'll get some rewards for it. But it's only up for like an hour or so. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the big giant tortoise that has a giant shell. Is that a Clefable? I feel like finding a, a naturally spawned Clefable is actually super rare. <gasps> oh, speaking of super rare spawns, let's go, baby. Check this out. Slashing shell. Yo, -ho! this is his past form. Oh, my gosh, his shell looks insane. Yo, and his head is ginormous. It looks like my forehead. Okay, let's not really emphasize that, Smags. Smags is my editor, by the way, guys. If he emphasizes my forehead, I like, come on. That's not even funny. That's not even funny. Oh, I thought that was a shiny muck for a second, too, but it's just the Alolan muck, right? You're not shiny. No, it's a grimer anyway. But anyway, yo, look at the booty on that thing, too. Sheesh. Shake it, boy. Get some help. Okay, sorry. I'm going to stop being weird. But, dude, look at how cool this guy is. Oh, my goodness. Let's compare him to the regular Blastoise. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Regular Blastoise is so tiny next to him. Yo. Oh. Oh my gosh, Blastoise, say hello to daddy. That is your, yeah, you see him just turn and look at him. He's like, yo, papa. Get some help. That was you like a couple million years ago, Blastoise. And now you've evolved into a little teeny tiny stinky little turtle. Look at him. Dude. Okay, anyway, anyway, enough making fun of regular Blast Toys. Let's go ahead and catch this thing. I do have a couple of Master Balls for this video. So let's toss one straight away and put them on our team. All right, and there we go. We caught him. Here he is, a Slashing Shell. He's only level 33. Right? Dude, riding him is so cool. Like, only our head is poking out. Anyway, let's go train this guy up to be level 100 and as strong as he possibly can be and compare him to the other Pokemon. And there we go. He is now level 100. 100 and learning his signature move called Grand Cannon. This move does 75 damage with 100% accuracy, but the twist with it is that it always lands a critical hit. The reason that it's so important that it crits every time is not only will this move now do 150 damage, but critical hits also ignore if you're burned. So that move is literally insane. Now it's time to compare his stats against the Blastoise's stats. So Blastoise has just under 300 HP and 236 defense, 290 95 special attack and well you can see the rest now if we go to slashing shell you can see is 361 hp 350 attack 300 defense and still a respectable 250 speed now i train him up to be a very very strong and hard hitting physical attacker but i'm fairly sure that he's supposed to be a very good physical defense pokemon and if you train him that way he will be an absolute wall for you let's go dude i love him so much all right but now 
that we have his past form, it is now time to go and hunt for the future form of Blastoise called Iron Blaster. Aha, and there we go, another wormhole. Let's see if this Blastoise has any more hops than the last one. Are you being serious? That's all you got? That is all you have? Bro, come on, we have to get all the way up there. Oh wait, that was actually a pretty valiant effort. Okay, what if we like go all the way around the back? Come on, buddy, we got this. I think I'm gonna name this guy Chungus. All right, Chungus, let's do this. Three, two, one, yeet. Oh, God. That was horrible. Come on, Chungus. You can do this. Use your legs. Use your legs. Yay. Oh, let me in. No, that was so close. Okay. You know what they say. Third time's the charm. We got this in three, two, one. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Chungus for the win. All right, but now we have to find another ultra deep sea biome to hopefully find his brother in arms. This is pretty much what would happen if like homo sapiens came back to life and then met us like regular normal humans. Oh god. Oh. I wonder what they would think. They'd probably see me and be like, what? Red hair? Guys, I get bullied for my red hair. I'm very insecure about it. But anyway, here we go. Here is an ultra space deep ocean biome. It is still very dark and gloomy. I wish there was a way to make it brighter, but I don't think that there is, unfortunately. Oh, Shellos! This is kind of like low-key a fan favorite Pokemon. A lot of people love Gastrodon, and I I honestly wouldn't be opposed to seeing a paradox version of that. I don't know, dude. I feel like I need to stop thinking about what every single Pokemon would look like with a past and future form and just pick like a couple at a time because there may be more of these paradox Pokemon coming. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So if you guys have any like amazing suggestions of which Pokemon we should do, let me know because I think that they would all be super cool and I need to find a way to narrow it down to just a couple. You know what? I just found a raid den. It's only a two star. I believe this is a Salazzle, but I want to test how strong our slashing shell really is. So let's grand cannon this thing and it's dead in one shot, in one stinking shot, bro. Oh my gosh. Let's go. I know it was only a two star den, but still we literally demolished that thing. Oh, a Hydreigon, dude. That's gotta be just as rare, if not pretty probably even more rare than finding these Paradox Pokemon. That is insane. Unfortunately, the Paradox Pokemon from the Pokemon game aren't quite in Pixamon yet, but Hydreigon does have one. I forget what it's called. I don't know. My amazing editor will put it on screen for you right now. But yeah, that Pokemon is super strong. So eventually when they do release into Pixamon, I'll be catching him as well. <gasps> oh my gosh. And there he is, baby. The Iron Blaster. Yo, he literally has a ginormous cannon strapped onto his back. It's it's not even a cannon. It's, it's like a it's like a beam from Star Wars. It's like a, well, it's a blaster. It's, that's why he's called the Iron Blaster. Not only that, though, but his shell looks awesome, dude. It looks like it's from the cosmos. Bro, tell me that's not like the coolest Pokemon form you've ever seen. Oh my gosh. Yo, that is so sick. Okay, let's compare him to the slashing shell. There is his past form on the left and his future form on the right. Bro, I, I'm gonna say it. The future form is so much cooler. I do love the past form. I think slashing shell looks awesome, but it's just nothing compared to Iron Blast. I think Iron Blaster might be my favorite Pokemon in the entire game at this point. It is just so gosh dang cool. Oh, wait, you know what's actually so cool? He doesn't have any custom sound effects. And normal Blastoise's sound cue, he just says blast. Which kind of makes sense because this dude has a giant blaster attached to him. <laughs> Imagine he says that and just pew, just like shoot his gun at this dude. <laughs> Hands up, bro. Give me all your money. Give me all your money. I'll do it. I'll do it, bro. He's not falling for. Dude, this is actually so cool. I will say, even though he does look amazing, he does have some flaws when it comes to the battlefield because his speed is is a pretty abysmal. It's only 40, but he has an HP of 105, attack of just 65, defense of 125, special attack of also 125, and special defense of 105, making him a very slow but hard hitting and tanky Pokemon. He kind of reminds me of like Glastrier a little bit, but water type. Oh wait, actually, what type is he? Oh. He 
He's water and electric. And he has the ability Mega Launcher, which powers up aura and pulse moves. That makes a ton of sense. Okay, but let's go ahead and train him up to level 100 and compare him to Slashing Shell and Blastoise. And there we go. He's now level 100 and learning the move Graviton Pulse. The user absorbs hydrogen molecules in the air around it, condenses them with the power of gravity, and launches an all-out blast at the opponent. That sounds epic. The best part about that move as well is every time it lands, it lowers the target speed. And the reason that's so important is because this guy is so slow. So if he's able to lower the opponent's speed, he then might be able to go first in the next turn. And here are his stats, a whopping 350 HP, 339 special attack, and he's actually not even that slow. Venusaur is one of the most iconic Pokemon in all of the game and comes from probably the most famous trio. It is such a cool Pokemon that it even has its own Mega Evolution and Gigantamax form. But even with all these other forms and evolutions, it still gets overshadowed by its counterpart, Charizard. But I'm here to change that. You see, I think Venusaur is a really, really cool Pokemon and extremely underappreciated. And so with all of the brand new Paradox Pokemon that just came out, I decided to create two Paradox forms for Venusaur. One in the past and one in the future. And this is not the first time that I've given Venusaur a custom form on my server. As you can see, Venusaur already has a fusion. This is Hydreosaur, which is Venusaur fused with Hydreigon. But that's not what you're here to see. What you are here to see is the brand new Paradox forms that I made for Venusaur. The ancient form is called Radiant Sail and the future form is called Iron Plant. And let me tell you, they both look amazing. Not only do they look super awesome, but they're both very strong as well. I'll get into their stats and abilities and even custom moves after I catch them. But anyway, first things first, I have to find a wormhole that takes me to the ultra space dimension because that is where these Pokemon will spawn. And of course, if you guys are interested in playing with these Pokemon as well, it's completely free as long as you have Minecraft. We have tons of custom paradox forms, fusions, custom textures on Pokemon and a bunch of other stuff. Whoa! Dude, this was not planned. I was literally just running around the wilderness and someone built a Bulbasaur head as their house? Is it their house? Yo! This is so cool. What the heck? And of course, in this video, I am looking for its older brother or its daddy, if you will. What a freaking coincidence. That's actually insane. Now, one thing that's really cool about having a Pixamon server is I can pretty much add any custom Pokemon that I want to the game. Although it does take a lot of work, obviously. But the reason I bring that up is because if you guys have any awesome ideas for other custom Paradox Pokemon or custom fusions, custom anything, really, make sure to go ahead and comment them down below because I'm constantly going through that comment section and picking out any good idea that I see to create in Pixelmon. And of course, if I do pick your idea, it'll be on the server, then you guys can play with your own idea. Oh, baby, there we go. There is a wormhole. Sometimes they just spawn naturally. But if you want to spawn in your own, you have to get a Lunala or a Solgaleo or an Arceus to do it. Anyway, let's see if we can actually get up there. Come on, Venusaur, jump, bro, jump. Come on. I feel like you should be able to use that giant flower on his back as a helicopter and get some extra air, but... No, he's pretty junky. All right, if Venusaur is not going to be able to do it, I guess I'll do it myself. Here we go. Ultra Space in three, two, one, Geronimo. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm like flying away. What the heck is going on? I'm floating. Okay, there we go. I just had a crouch. All right, but here we go. The Ultra Space Dimension, and we're actually in the correct biome that we need to be in in order to find the Venusaur. He spawns in the jungle biome in here. I think that there's only three different biomes in all of Ultra Space. It's like this jungle, then there's the deep ocean, and then there's the desert. The Paradox Forms for Blastoise spawn in the ocean, the Paradox Forms for the Charizard spawn in the desert, and of course, the Paradox Forms for the Venusaur spawn in the jungle. So this is where we're going to be hanging out for the most part as we hunt for Venusaur. Okay, but so far we've only seen a picky pack of Mankey, Slack off. Seeing these Pokemon though does spark some ideas for me. I don't know why, but for some reason, I think it would be really funny and fun if we make a custom form of like a pretty garbage Pokemon, but make it really, really good. I Like I know Golden Caterpie is a meme. What if we made that in Pixelmon and just made it like super, super strong? Or like God Bidoo, for example. I don't know. That could just be my 14 year old brain talking and that might just be a really dumb idea. But that's the beauty of my 
Minecraft is there is no limit to what you can do. Also, what is going on with all of these trees breaking? Is it because I haven't showered? It could be that. It honestly could be that. I think it's worth noting as well that the spawn rates of these things are pretty much to the same exact spawn rates of an ultra beast. So if you guys do come on and try to hunt these, do not expect them to spawn very quickly. I do have a secret though. If you're looking for the future Charizard, I'm pretty sure it's actually relatively common, especially compared to the rest of the Paradox forms, because there's only like three other Pokemon that spawn in the air, and Charizard is one of them, so it's only competing with two other Pokemon to spawn. Oh! Oh, baby! There we go! There is one right there! That is the Radiant Sail! It is massive! Holy guacamole! Yo! That thing is so... It has a mohawk! It has a giant mohawk! Do the dance, do the dance, do the dance! Uh, uh, uh! Yo! Let's go, dude! Look at this thing! It's ginormous compared to the Venusaur! Oh my god! And it has a giant tail, too! I didn't even realize Venusaur, like, doesn't have a tail at all. Dang! He ain't double cheeked up, though, I gotta say. I just, I'm sorry, I had to say that. Oh my gosh, dude, I gotta turn my screen. Sheesh! Okay, sorry, 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 getting distracted. All right, anyway, anyway, let's go ahead, catch this dang thing, check out his stats, check out his abilities, his moves, all that good stuff. This thing is so sick. Even look at his sprite in the top left. That sprite is awesome looking. But here we go, baby. Here is the Radiant Sail, the ancient form of Venusaur. He honestly just looks like an alpha. Like, he just looks like an alpha form of Venusaur. He looks like he could just lead an entire pack of Venusaurs into battle. Battle. He is him, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, they, they got nervous. They got nervous. They got nervous. They got nervous. Oh my gosh, though. What is a good nickname for this thing? I feel like it's got to be something with this mohawk. I mean, that thing is rad. Anyway, I'm going to go train this guy up to level 100 so we can check out how strong his stats get and his brand new signature move. All right, there we go. He is now level 100 and learning his signature move, Rose Whip. This move has 60 base power, is a physical attacking move, and every time it lands, it lays spikes on the field. Now, if you guys aren't into competitive Pokemon, you may not really know how significant that is, but that move is crazy. Not only that, but it has the ability Toxic Boost, which means when it is poisoned, its attack stat gets a boost. And it is a physical attacker with a whopping attack of 328. But its most impressive feature is how tanky and bulky it is. With 361 HP, 286 defense, 246 special defense, and a pretty poor 249 speed. Oh, and he's grass and rock type, giving him a very unique moveset. Anyway, that was taking a blast into the past. Now let's take a future into the future. That doesn't make any sense. All right, but here we go. We are now back in the ultra space dimension. We did spawn in the desert biome though, which is where the Paradox Charizard spawned. It would be pretty funny if when I was searching for a future Venusaur that I find a future Charizard instead. Like I said, finding them flying around in the sky apparently is pretty common right now and might need to get nerfed. But anyway, let's keep chugging along through this desert until we stumble across a jungle biome because there's not going to be any Venusaur spawning here. Now, if you guys do get on and hunt for Venusaur yourselves, be careful because this biome that I'm in right now is actually a forest. It is not the jungle biome. You got to make sure that you're hunting for them in the actual jungle biome, which there seems to be one right up here. Yes. Okay. This is classified as a jungle biome, which is where you'll find the Venusaur paradoxes. One hour later. Oh my goodness. Let's go. There we go, baby. This is the future Venusaur called Iron Plant. Look at him. Yo. He looks like a cyborg Venusaur. That is so sick. Look at the flower on the top of his back too. Yo. Oh my gosh. That is so cool looking. He's got to be grass and steel type, right? Surely he is. That is one problem that I feel like the future Pokemon run into though is they all look like they're steel types. So I'm not sure it's actually going to be or not. But let's go ahead and battle him with the 
the ancient form. Look at this. We have the radiant sail up on the top right. Iron plant in the bottom left. Bro, that is so sick. I wish I could show off the actual Venusaur model like right in the middle just to compare all three of them together, which we can do after I catch it. But there we go. We caught him. So let's go ahead and check him out. Oh my gosh, bro. He looks so sick. Okay, and now I'm going to train him up to level 100 so that we can compare his stats to the radiant sail. And here is his signature move. Mechanized Venom. Now, it is a poison type, which is a little bit odd. I'm going to get that checked out and maybe change to a grass or steel type. But it's a special move that does 60 damage and has a 100% chance to poison the enemy. As far as his stats go, he's also extremely tanky with 341 HP, 306 defense, and 246 special defense. He also has pretty good special attack at 328. Now, again, I trained this Pokemon to be a special attacker, so if you train it to be a physical defender or a special defender, it would be a lot more tanky. But here are his stats compared to Radiant Sales stats. And lastly, he has the ability Full Metal Body, which prevents other Pokemon from lowering its stats. I want you guys to comment down below which of these two forms you prefer. Personally, I think Iron Plant is a little bit cooler than Radiant Sail, but Radiant Sail is like more manly. I don't know how to explain it. But if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see some more custom Pokemon videos, be sure to go ahead to leave a like and subscribe.